Hello everyone, my name is Raven and welcome to my Hero Engine tutorial series. In this tutorial we are going to cover the renderer panel and what most of everything in there does. Okay, so to get to the renderer panel, down here you should see render. However, if you don't see it, go up to Windows and then select the renderer window. Okay, so a lot of stuff in here is fairly straightforward. The camera speed obviously adjusts the camera speed when we are in fly mode. The position, rotation, zoom, and look at all gives us relevant information as to like what our camera is doing. Game mode rotation, fly mode rotation, and wheel, all these just invert the controls. Like I can invert the mouse, which is not kind of weird, and I'm going to undo that. Okay. <laughs> now. We can change between, as you see here, we have active. Right now at fly, we can go back to our game. Alternatively, also, we can go over here. And we can also select overhead mode, which just allows us to look at it from a rather interesting perspective. All right, now I'll go back to game. Okay. Okay. And up next in behavior, auto select room determines whether or not the camera, like, picks whatever room it's in. And collision response will just show this really quick. Right now when I try to go, obviously I'm kind of stuck on the terrain. I can't go through it or any objects for that matter, although I do believe I can go through the player. But if there are any other objects at the scene, I couldn't go through. So I can hit F12 or check this box here or down here. You see this little arrow? This will also turn off camera collision and you can see when it's on, or rather off, because the arrow will be going through the wall and now we can go through the terrain. Okay, and up next we have visualizers. So first we have bounds. If we check this, we can see this right here is the outline of the current rooms. Um, as you can see, we really only have one room, so we have this nice lovely little box around our height map, and that's pretty much our room. Okay, next we have the FPS graph, which shows our... Well, some rather useful statistical information like our, our frame rate, draw calls, and network performance, and a bunch of other stuff. Our sun, it shows a representation of where the sun is in our world. And right now, as you can see, our sun is right here. Next, we have performance warning. Uh, this basically flags it if something's taking far too long to do something in Hero Engine, it will pop up. Next, we have Animixer, and this toggles, or should toggle, the animations. Yep, as you can see, my poor little hero is no longer doing anything, and poor guy, so let's turn these back on so I can move. Next, we have Tooltips. This obviously enables tooltips for all the tools inside of, ooh, yes, let's turn off tooltips, because that is kind of, well, that is actually kind of useful. It does tell you a lot of useful information about anything that you have your cursor over. However, that takes up a lot of uh, space and it's kind of annoying. And, but it will prove to be very useful. Okay, next we have trails, which essentially toggles render trails. Uh, next we have highlighting, which is like when you have um, triggers selected, you can see the outline of it. Selected only. This will render only selected objects. And we should be able to see this. Nope. Now oh, you can see our character has disappeared. And if we select our character, now our terrain has disappeared. Okay. Next up, we have dim other rooms slash areas. This renders all objects red in the currently active area. Regardless, all rooms. This will draw all the rooms in the area regardless of whether or not you're in them or not, or they are visible. Okay, bright disables fogs and sets everything to full bright. As you can see, everything is now kind of bright and not really all that pretty, but very useful for debugging purposes. Okay, isolate light. If it is checked, um, any lights that you have in the scene, it will only show areas that it is taking effect to. Okay, deformers, uh, if you turn this off, it will disable GPU 
deformation of vertices. Okay, character cues renders a variety of information um, in association with character positioning and movement. Oops, sorry about that. And next we have overdraw, and if we select it, this will essentially draw, this will uh, color code um, each overdraw at the screen pixel level. Turn that off. Next up is the axis indicator, which you can see down here. It shows the positioning. And next is compass, which obviously, as you can see right here, shows our orientation of where we are facing. Like right now, I'm running southeast. All right, next we have particles. Okay, this just covers rendering billboard, granny particles, updating them, and their collision. All right, moving on to debugging. This is uh, useful stuff uh, that the programmers will have. Um, I'll just leave this alone for now. Next up, we have mesh. This obviously show wireframe, shows our world being drawn in wireframe. This draws each texture as a one by one texture. And obviously we can draw no draw. So we can draw the world with no textures. Next up, normals. Let's zoom in here a little bit. You can see the normals and you can adjust their size. In case you can't see them when they're really tiny at 10. You can show tangents and the binormals. And you can also adjust the LOD for when the LOD will kick in. However, I'm not really sure, <clears throat> don't really have any objects in scene that would actually be affected by that. However, uh, there is a way to turn on character. Okay, so next we have the render panel, and this is where we can use different shader models. For example, we can fall back to fixed function, which is kind of nasty and doesn't really work. So I'm just going to stick with shader model 3. And we can disable a variety of effects like bump mapping, specular, macro, displace, glow, fill, etc. We can also adjust the global mitmap level. Remember, each of our textures um, in the entire game is stored at DDS, and DDS is stored mitmaps. And you use these to, as you can see, I'm lowering the texture quality. You can use these to adjust the texture quality of your game. So if you were going to say use very high as texture setting, you would use zero, and next down you would use one and two and so forth until... Well, obviously, I don't think you would want to go to 9 because that's just kind of crappy, but you get the point. And you can also adjust um, the macro UV size overdraw, what kind of texture filtering, and the bias of it. As well, you can also adjust all culling settings here, and you can also disable using the Umbra culling system here. And you can turn on bounding boxes, test models, and write models. All right, moving on. Now, this panel right here, uh, I don't have any speed trees in the scene. However, this basically allows you to turn off and adjust when uh, speed tree models will flip over to their LOD variant. All right, next, um, same as up here in the renderer, except this one applies only to our character. So we could set our character detail to low, and we can turn off alpha blend hair, GPU animation, uh, we can adjust the character bloom, etc. We can make them really bright. And we can turn on long distance materials, bump, specular, display, sad, macro, and I'm going to turn this back down because that's way too shiny. Alright, and we can also export out face gen layouts. And last but not least, in the renderer panel, we can turn on shadows and adjust them. And we can also render the shadow map. Obviously, there's not much in the scene, so our shadow is rather tiny. We can also turn on Omni Shadows, Shadow Culling. We can force fully dynamic shadows, whether or not we want to do both static and dynamic shadows. Then we can adjust what our shadows, what we want our shadow, sorry, what will cast shadows and what will actually be able to receive shadows. So right now, I'm going to turn off the height map. And even though our character is cast in the shadow, our height map cannot receive the shadow. And we can turn off and on uh, shadow filterings. 
And we can also adjust the shadow map resolution. So 32 by 32, which is kind of ugly and messy and nasty. And these settings down here, they allow you to adjust. Um, you have to adjust these based on whatever uh, works best for your particular uh, game. However, at default, they seem to work okay. For example, if I turn all these way down, our shadows will become much crisper. However, the distance at which they'll be rendered is obviously one. So, you know, if something was, say, like right here, you would not be able to see the shadow of it. Okay, so that concludes this tutorial. Um, check the description for the wiki link that covers just the render panel, and you can get a nice text version of everything. Um, if you have any questions, stop by the Hero Engine forums, or you can stop by my forums as well. Uh, please follow me on Twitter. If you'd like to keep up to date with like when a new tutorial is going live or anything of that nature. As well, I have both a Facebook page and a Steam page, or sorry, Steam group, which you can join. And uh, yeah. Okay, so thank you, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.